A tree is known by its fruits. That's the Gospel reading from this past Sunday, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. And it brings us three good questions. The first one, how do you know a good tree from a bad tree? The second, are you a good tree or a bad tree? And the third, how do you become the type of tree that you want to be? Now, I'm using the analogy of a tree because that's the analogy used in the Gospel. You know a person's quality by their deeds. You know them by what they do, more than what they say. Because just as above is so below, so within, so without. So what a person does on the outside gives you an indication of what they're doing on the inside. For example, somebody could be virtue signaling, talking about charity and all that kind of stuff, talking about being good to people and all that kind of stuff. But what do they do with their own lives? How charitable are they really with their own resources? How charitable are they with their own space, with things they have? If they're not giving up a bunch of stuff, but they're expecting you to do it, then all they're doing is virtue signaling. They're hypocrites. They're liars. And they're not worth being listened to. So just get that stuff out of your mind. You don't need the negativity in your life. So. One way to learn the difference between a good tree and a bad tree, because it's not just people that can be good or bad, so can ideologies. Because ideology, it's a very weird thing. By ideology, I'm talking religious ideas, I'm talking philosophical ideas, I'm talking everything. And we're talking about a tree being known by its fruits. We're not interested in a philosophical discussion. That's abstract, and oftentimes that's just mental masturbation with a bunch of made-up words. We're talking, how does it affect boots on the ground, results on the physical plane. Okay, sorry, I'm actually walking down a trail in Taylorsville Park, and I just passed a lady walking her dog. Beautiful dog, too. Okay, where was I? So, we're talking about manifestation, boots on the ground, on the physical plane. What do, what are the things we look for? Well, do the results of this ideology actually help people? Do they put people in misery? I'm not too good, too good on collectivism. I'm not too good on any ideology of somebody that says, I want to be taken care of. I don't want responsibility for myself, even for my day-to-day -day decisions. I, do, I just want to be ruled over. Because these are not ideologies that bear good fruit. I mean, we're on a path of liberation here. We're not on a path of servitude, and we're not on a path of enslavement. We seek neither to lord over others or to be lorded over by others. So in this sense, we can see good fruits from bad fruits. In fact, a good tree, that's an ideology, does it encourage the individual to be all that he or she can be? Does it encourage the individual to grow in virtue? Does it encourage the individual to grow in strength? Does it encourage the individual to grow to the best of his or her potential? So, how do we tell? Well, this goes into the gift of discernment. Now, people who go with Hermetic Qabbalah would say that discernment, i.e. discrimination, is the virtue associated with the Safra Malchus. Well, that's not exactly correct. The, the actual virtues, the Chochos HaNefesh, the powers of the soul, or the soul powers, associated with Malchus are actually Hitnesis, which is exaltedness, and Shlifus, which is loneliness, or humility. This actually squares with what I've been saying for years, that humility is the first step on the path of return. Of course, I'm getting this from the first joyful mystery of the Rosary. Whereas to me, the 15 mysteries are the tree. The 15 mysteries are the map of spiritual, spiritual unfoldment. As per a division of three in the purgative, illuminative, and unitive life. But that's a subject for a whole nother video, a whole nother time. But the interesting thing is when we look at Hypnosis and Shlifus, we're actually looking at, strangely enough, parallels to the first part of the Magnificat. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Her loneliness is what caused her to be exalted. Now, the thing with, with this, okay, the thing with humility, is humility for humility's sake is not a good thing. Humility for the sake of putting away my personal pride, putting away my personal pre prejudices, putting away my preconceived notions. These are the kind of things that may, these are the kind of things that humility is good for. Humility, that I may discern the voice of God. Humility, that I may know my fellow man. For who, what exactly they are. And that I may discern how to reach out to them. So yes, discernment is one of the first virtues on the path of return. However, discernment must either be preceded by or concomitant with humility, which in turn leads to exaltation. Now the whole concept of the spiritual fruits and the kokos hanefesh, 
Again, ooh, I got mud right in front of me. Let me go around this. Okay, that's going to be a subject for another video. Today, nature trails are a fun thing to walk, aren't they? All right, that's going to be a subject for another video. But what I want to talk about here is that discernment is how we can tell a good tree from a bad. So what kind of a tree are you? What kind of person are you? A good person? A bad person? Are you the kind of person who is outfitted to the best of your ability to, to go forth in your spiritual life and to conquer the obstacles that are in front of you? Are you set for your individual liberation? Because that's what this is. This is a path of liberation, not enslavement. That is why I said before, we seek neither to be enslaved nor to enslave. We simply seek to be free. And we seek freedom for others to the best of their ability. Now, one of the best things that I've seen, you can open up any prayer book from before Vatican II, and you'll see something called the examination of conscience. In fact, you can look this up on the internet. What it does, it goes through the, the Ten Commandments, it goes through the six precepts of the Church, it goes through various other things and asks a series of questions. Have I committed this particular act? Have I omitted this particular act? And so on. Now, put that in the back of your mind for a second, because you can use that, and it can give you an idea of what kind of person I, am I in terms of what the Church wants me to be. But this isn't about what the Church wants. This is about... What is the best kind of person for you to be for your goals and for your liberation? Now, the two are generally one and the same. But, obviously, there's going to be some, some variation because we are not the slaves of an institution. Even if we are members, we are still free individuals. That word, individual. That's what we are. We... We use the rules of the institution, we use the teachings of the institution because they help us, because they can help form us into being better people. But any time when the institution tries slamming people under its thumb, and actually my favorite example of this are the marriage laws, which have a lot more to do with control than they do with the substance of the sacrament. I may do a rundown on that someday. But any time that happens, any time it's an institutional man-made law, not a God-made law, well... It is better to obey God than to obey man. It's that simple when the two come into conflict. So what do you do? You look through the examination of conscience. Then you look at your goals. You look at the steps you need in order to accomplish your goals. Now, I'm not going to give out outright goals because each person is different. Like some of you, you, some of you, you might want to do the big financial thing. Others, you might just want to have like a tiny cabin in the woods. So look at what your goals are. Are you taking the steps that are getting you to your goals? If you are not, then you need to make some changes. So, okay, how do we become the kind of tree that we want to be, bear the kind of fruit we want to bear, i.e. achieve our goals, i.e. set forth an example to others that would actually say, hey, this person's all right, this person's on to something. Maybe we should listen to what they're saying. Because everything you want has something to do with other people. Even when you go to work and make, make your money, if you don't deal with anybody during the course of your job, you still have other people involved in your income. Getting that nice house or that cabin in the woods is going to involve other people. So yes, the example you set to other people is important. That's part of a tree being known by its fruits. All right, I want to bring this back around. So one thing to look at with how to become a better tree, good tree, bad tree, I, I don't even care. This is on you. Okay, remember what I said with that examination of conscience? Well, there's something else. This is one of my favorite things I've talked about before. St. Ignatius says, for getting rid of a sin or a defect, you simply count the number of times you did it per day, mark it down on a piece of paper, and it forces your mind to pay attention to it. You'll find yourself doing less and less. So here's how I would expand on that. You write down on a list of paper, write down good qualities and bad qualities. Patience, charity, anger, frustration, dirty words... You name it. Okay. And what you do with that list, all right, just go ahead, get your list together. What you do with that list is every time you do something that's on that, good or bad, you make a mark. You can do a dot, you can do a hash mark, whatever floats your boat. At the end of the day, count them. And then go through your day backwards before you go to bed at night. Go through your day. What could I have done different? What, what, what did I do right what did I do right, but I could have done better? Ask yourself some basic questions. Don't be judgmental. 
Don't be hateful to yourself. Just be accepting, be observant, and be open-minded about it. What this does, this forces your conscious mind to pay attention to what you're doing, and it sends a signal to your subconscious. These are the behaviors I want to augment. These are the behaviors I want to delete. So keep doing that, and maybe over a period of th three to four weeks, go ahead and take a look at your numbers from the beginning to your numbers then. Just every three to four weeks, do that. What you're going to find happen is, because you're conscious of it, you will start you will start changing. It's going to start changing your deeds. It'll start changing your works. It may even change who you are on the inside because you're thinking differently and you're doing differently. There's the old saying, Legem credendi statuit lex supplicandi. The law of prayer influences the law of belief. That's also the phrase lex orandi, lex credendi. Well, the thing is, what, how we act influences the way we believe. How we believe influences the way we act. It's very much as, as above, so below, as within, so without. It's very much that. One's the reflection of the other. So what you're doing is you're looking to create changes on the inside by first making yourself conscious of changes that need to be made on the outside and then making them. So once you have that done, you should be well on the way to becoming the type of tree that you want to be, and it should also help get you on the way to be getting to your goals. Now, I want to caution you about something. It is possible to take this method and go over much. Case in point. Okay, my social skills aren't the best. Everybody knows that. In fact, I suck in social situations. That's one of the reasons I avoid people. However, I wanted to get better. And about, what, five, six years ago, I got a hold of a copy of Dale Carnegie. It's a good book for what it has. However, it's real easy to take what's in there and put it out of control. Like, for example, okay, fine. You're being complimentary. You use a person's name. You remember things, you let them do the talking, and so on and so on. If the person is being honest and operating in good faith, it's excellent. If the person is being disingenuous, well, anything from that book is not going to help you. In fact, you're better off with Bissell's Dealing with Difficult People, or Hayden Elgin's The Verbal Violence Talks, um, Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense. Listen, I don't do well talking while I'm walking, can you tell? Okay, so... Always look to balance out any curriculum you have for yourself. Always look to balance out what you're doing. And if you find yourself in a situation where, for, if you find yourself in a situation where what you're doing is actually not working in the real world, even if it is by the book, well, don't be armchair. Look at what's going on and just stop it. For example, in my case, yeah, I read Del Carnegie. I took it to heart. I became kind of a wuss because of it, actually. And, well, I realized, you know what? The best way is probably not to be nice anymore. It's just not to have any chill. If somebody starts something, call them on it. If somebody, if somebody is just, somebody is clearly being disingenuous, like arguing for the sake of arguing, just call them on it. It's, it's like being nice does not, does not work for me because being nice ends up me getting taken advantage of. We don't live in the age of civil discourse. I think it's sad, I think it sucks, I think it's terrible. But that's the age we live in, what are we going to do about it? The only thing we can do is adapt survival strategies. So for me, not being a nice person is the best way to go. I learned my lesson last year, and, well, it's changed. So be ready to adapt your strategy. Do not take your list to heart too much to the point where you end up being a doormat. A thing to put into this, all right? is the meaning of the word meek within Christian teaching. That word has been so dragged through the mud and so distorted. The original Greek is parais. That means having power but choosing not to use it. That's why, turn, that's why Jesus says turn the other cheek in one place and another. If you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Turn the other cheek does not mean be a doormat and let them pound the living crap out of you. Turn the other cheek means you turn it once. You give them one chance to back off. If they don't take that chance, then you go at them. But it's balanced, because he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. So, what you have is, don't be a doormat, give them one chance. Give them one chance before you show your power. Then show your power, but restrain yourself so that you don't become an asshole with showing your power. You see how those three texts all work together? So, that right there is it. A balanced approach is the key to being a good tree and bearing good fruit. Not taking things all the way to one side, 
Case in point, there are people, particularly liberal theology, takes the idea of love too far. Love and tolerance and open-mindedness. In some cases, the point where their brains fall out. Conservative theology takes the idea of obedience too far to the idea where their brains didn't even develop. It's all about obedience to the magisterium. The faithful are to behave with docility to what the hierarchy tells them. Yeah, screw you. Screw all of you. It's one of the reasons I stick with traditional theology, because traditional theology is a strong intellectual tradition. You have to think in order to participate in it. You have to think, and it advocates a balanced course, not an extreme course one way or the other. I'm getting off subject here, and I apologize for that. But this has to do with how to become a good tree versus a bad tree. You know what? If you want to become a bad tree, you can use this for that, too. I really, I'm just putting that information out there. I mean, I left ministry three years ago. I am not concerned with your salvation. That is your concern now. My concern is information. My concern is getting you information that will help you. And my hope is that this information does help you. If it did help you, that's awesome. If it didn't help you, I'm sure there are a million other videos on YouTube that will. So, I'm not offended one way or the other. Just remember, a tree is judged by its fruit. Ideologies can be poison trees just like people can be. You have to discern what kind of tree you are, and along with the kind of trees you want to hang with. You also have to discern what kind of tree you wish to become, and then set up a road map and a path for being there, and getting there, I mean along with course corrections in case you go a little bit too far with what you're doing. And on that said, Benedica vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, Filius, Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.